iPhone 12 Pro, as we all know, is an incredible device and it is an incredible camera in its own right. But can you use this as your only camera? That's what I want to have a look at in this video today. So what I'm going to do is take some pictures. Well, I've actually already taken the pictures. We're going to have a look at the pictures. We're going to edit them in Lightroom on the iPad Pro and see if you can get away with using just the iPhone 12 Pro as your only camera instead of using a camera like I'm using like right now, such as the Sony a7C. Let's get into it. <laughs> So just before we go any further, if you are new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of photography, video, and tech related videos. So if they are the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button just down below there and come and be a part of this community. So I have here on my iPhone 12 Pro, three pictures that I took at work. These are of a car, the brand new Audi e-tron GT. If anyone is interested in cars, that's what the car is. I don't have a particular interest in cars, so I'm probably in the wrong job. But anyway, these are pictures I took on my iPhone 12 Pro of the Audi e-tron GT. Now I have put these into Lightroom on my mobile phone. You can see here that we are in Lightroom. So they are automatically syncing straight to my iPad. Now the reason I'm gonna edit them on my iPad is just because of the bigger display. It makes it a little bit easier to edit. So I'm gonna record my screen on my iPad here so you can see the whole process that we go through to edit this image that we took on the iPhone. Now I will just say I took these pictures in Apple Pro Raw so we could try and get the best possible quality from these pictures. So the first thing I like to do when I'm editing my pictures is mess around with the contrast. Now with this picture I think we could lower it down but I want it to be quite a moody picture so I think I'm going to just take it up just a tiny little bit. I'm definitely going to drop the highlights down because it's very bright and the whites as well. We'll lift the exposure up a little bit and I think we're going to bring the blacks down and the shadows up just a little bit. Take the exposure back down and it's all about just messing around with your picture. There's no right or wrong way to edit your pictures. So you can see there the difference already if we tap on and off that we have made to the picture. Not a huge difference but it, it looks a little bit darker and that's the the mood that I want to go for with this picture. So we're going to move down into the colour tab and we're just going to warm it up a tiny little bit as it looks a bit cool. And then what I like to do is take the vibrance all the way up nearly, well not all the way but quite high and then drop the saturation down. So if we tap on and off again you can see that we've already made a massive difference to this image. However it still looks a little bit digital, you can almost still tell that it's taken on a mobile phone and that's something that I'm trying to get to away from because everyone nowadays is taking pictures on the mobile phone you can usually tell just about if a picture hasn't been edited especially that it is taken on a mobile phone they're all very sharp they look very digital so with this picture I'm gonna go into the effects we're gonna add a little bit of texture and go about there I reckon I'm gonna take the clarity all the way down if I take the clarity up you can see that it just makes it look even more shiny even more digital so what I'm going to do is take the clarity down and I'm going to leave the vignette because I'm going to come back to this in just a moment. Now this grain slider is my absolute favourite, I love it. This is where you can get away from that digital kind of feel of the picture because you can add in a little bit of grain. Now it only has to be very subtle but if we zoom in here for example and we take the grain all the way up. You can see the difference that that makes. If we take it all the way down, that's what it was like when we first started. And just by adding a little bit of grain, it just helps make it look a little bit more natural. That is my favorite tool in Lightshop as you can create a nice textured feel and a really nice looking image. And then we're gonna go into detail and we're gonna take the sharpening down because what happens in your iPhone when you take pictures is it's automatically sharpened to the point where it, it just looks in incredibly digital. So we're going to take the sharpening down. Now sometimes if you're taking this on a mirrorless or a DSLR camera you might want to boost it a little bit but because it's taken on a mobile phone we're just going to take it down. So you can see there already how much of a difference we have made to this image. So that is the original image and that is what we've got so far with this picture. The main focal point of this image is the car. However, that doesn't really feel like that at the moment because of everything else going on in the image. We've got a lot of open space here and we've got 
another car in the way here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to click on this little circle button here and click plus and grab the gradient tool. I want to try and blur this car out a little bit to try and direct our eyes towards the Audi e-tron GT. So we're just going to drag this gradient over here. I'm going to spin it around, drag it over this car just here. And then we're going to go into light and mess around with the exposure and increase the contrast and just darken it a little bit. Maybe add in a little more noise just so it blurs it out a little bit more because what you find with an iPhone is you can't really get a huge amount of depth of field. You could take your pictures in portrait mode, however that has its pros and cons. It's great if you're just trying to get a a quick little snap if you're trying to take some serious photos I'd probably sway away from the portrait mode by doing this we're just trying to emulate that depth of field look and then what I'm gonna do is add another gradient and we're gonna drag it up here where all of this dark space is and we're gonna do the exact same because the floor we don't want to be the focal point of this image and already you can see your eyes are focused towards the car a little bit more. And if we tap on and off, you can see again how much of a difference we have made to this image. It is far more interesting to look at now that we've made all those changes. However, it's a little bit dark around here where we've got the two gradients crossing over. So I'm going to go into the crop tool, make sure it's in 3x4 because that's what things like Instagram like. And we're just going to crop out that really dark bit. And there we go, I think that looks okay. And that is a hell of a lot better than the original image. You'd almost not think that that picture was taken on an iPhone. You could have quite easily taken that on a mirrorless or DSLR camera and got that effect. The fact that it's taken on an iPhone, yes, it's taken a little bit of editing to make it look like that, but it looks so much more pleasing to the eye. It's so much more interesting to look at. Might be a little bit too dark for some people, so you can lift the exposure and just mess around with it as much as you possibly want to, to get that desired effect. So we're gonna do the same again with this picture. This is a picture of the steering wheel. Now, one thing that I would say is very important when you're taking pictures, this is just a photography tip in general, is try and look for angles that you wouldn't necessarily see. So for example, with the first picture, I hid behind the car a little bit to add a little bit of depth. With this picture, I've just hidden the camera slightly behind the door pillar. So it just again creates that nice depth and it looks a little bit more interesting than just a straight picture of a steering wheel. I'm going to do the exact same because I want this picture to look like it was edited with the first picture. Now, yes, you could just copy the settings over from that picture to this picture, and I would usually do that. However, I'm not going to, just because we're talking through the whole process of creating nice pictures from your iPhone. I'm again just gonna warm it up just a tad, not a huge amount, but I'm just gonna increase the vibrance again, and it looks very orange, so we're gonna take down the saturation to about there, and we're gonna again add in some grain. Again, my favorite tool to use in Lightroom is this grain tool, so that's what it is like. Originally, it looks very sharp, and we add in the grain, and it just makes it look a lot less digital and digitally sharpened processed image, because I personally don't really like that. I like it to look natural. Again, we're gonna click on this tool, and add in a gradient and drag that up there along this pillar. I'm gonna bring down the exposure, measure on with the contrast, take the highlights down. And I think that looks okay. So again, you can see we've made a massive difference to this picture and you wouldn't necessarily think that that was taken on an iPhone. It blows my mind just how good this camera is. Now, sometimes you do need to mess around if you want to get good quality pictures like we are doing now in Lightroom. However, yes, you can get some good pictures while you're just snapping, but to get images like this that look really, really good and shots you wouldn't necessarily expect to be taken on an iPhone is incredible because you literally carry around this everywhere you go. It's in your pocket all the time. A camera like this that I'm using right now, the a7C or even Holly's a7R2, don't always have them on you. So the best camera you can possibly use at any time is always the one that you have on you. Now, yes, if you have your main camera on you, use that camera. But sometimes you need something a little bit smaller. You might not be carrying around this with you and you can get some incredible shots with your iPhone. Now to prove this once more, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the settings from this picture 
and we're going to paste them onto this one last picture and have a very quick mess around with it. I don't think there's a huge amount we can do with this. I think that's how I want it to look. I'm just going to crop it a little bit. We're going to take out everything you can see through the window. And I think that looks a lot better. We'll leave that there. And again, it's a nice moody dark image you could have quite easily taken on another camera. I'm definitely going to start using this a little bit more now because I've had this for, how long has it been out now? Nearly a year, I guess and I don't use it nearly enough. I always try and use my main camera if I can, obviously, but I need to start using this a lot more. I think for photography, an iPhone is a hell of a lot better than it is for video, even though video is slowly catching up, but incredible, incredible little photography device. That is it for this video. It turns out you can get some incredible shots from your iPhone that you wouldn't necessarily think were from an iPhone. And that is the whole point behind this video. I don't want my iPhone shots to look like iPhone shots because everything you see on social media now looks like an iPhone shot. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you like what you see in this channel, don't forget to click that little subscribe button just down below there. Give this video a thumbs up and I shall see you all very soon in another video.